Hoax Tuesday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls, our stab at a talk show. Thanks for joining us. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. Uh, prepare to be sorely disappointed. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool stuff like, a, I don't know, a throw rug, a pillow, a shower curtain, a phone case, uh, check out our shop listed below. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be on the talk show or on one of the one shots every other Saturday, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. Uh, we will get you on there. We like to push new players there. Uh, to the top, much like that fucking cat. Uh, our, <laughs> our games and talk show are for mature audiences only, so if you don't like it, change the channel. Uh, please find something that you do like. We, you're not picky. We want you to be happy too. Uh, let us thank our sponsors. If you're interested in getting some custom dice, like new Big Red here, uh, check out on Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, hit them up, see if they have time to go ahead and uh, whip, whip something up for you. Uh, might be good, might be bad. They might say, no, they're too busy. Uh, you know, shit happens. Uh, you piss and, them up if you're a DM and they say, fuck you, I'm not doing it anymore. Oh, uh, we got that story uh, in our recap. Uh, and if your game stinks, unlike ours, try a little bit of Adventure Sense. Uh, Get those old factory glands uh, moving uh, because, you know, it's nice to smell nice things, unlike putrid sewers. Uh, Oddfishgames.com has over 60 different scents, not including their special holiday editions, so check them out. Uh, they even come in large tins or, or amulets you can wear so that the aroma wafts up to you all the time. They also have something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a distinguished writer like myself, only gooder, uh, check out their Shine System coming soon, their RPG version of the Shine System. Uh, and they want to let everybody know they are feverishly working on getting everybody their stuff uh, who promoted and uh, subscribed to How to RPG with Your Cat. Uh, great product. I chipped in. I hope you did too, if not. Eh, check out their RPG Shine system. They're going to kickstart that too. That being said, this is Tuesday night. This is Between the Rolls. This is our talk show. And most importantly, this is Iron DM, our favorite show. Uh, we're going to do a couple of recaps on the games we played last week. And then we're going to move into Iron DM, how to build a community. So without further ado, and yes, uh, these are numerically out of order, and that is on me. But we will start with uh, episode 304, Cacophony, episode 49. Uh, all three of us uh, are clearly in Cacophony. Uh, I DM it, and these two play in it. So uh, uh, welcome aboard, Carrie. Uh, no, this is her first between the roles. Uh, oh, yeah. And welcome aboard, David. So David, tell us who you are, please. Hi, I'm David, and I play in the <laughs> the campaign that Frank uh, just outlined, or what we deem uh, soap opera cacophony. I play Zadar. He is a gender fluid changeling uh, arcane trickster. Uh, I'm also on our calamity campaign on every other Saturday night, which no Saturday night we have one coming up, and it looks like it might be the B side, the B squad boys it from Toad Town. So, uh, so you can find me there uh, most Tuesdays on Between the Rolls. Not all Tuesdays because I wasn't on last week. Uh, so, uh, and one shots from time to time. Uh, you can catch me on those too. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I just play, you know, Camille's. I don't know, whatever partner in Come crime. In. Part, partner in crime. <laughs> yep. And that is a relevant term. <laughs> I gotta let true. the dog out. Uh -oh. Okay, well, uh, while she leaves, David, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about Cacophony 49. Okay, Cacophony, yes. So, Cacophony number 49 uh, picks up where uh, Camille and Zadar left off. I think, where were we before? We were, uh, it was the next day 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we after the cheese uh, festival, Asiago after the cheese festival. Yeah, yeah. And we woke up the next morning still hungry, and we made our way to a, uh, a bakery or patissiery or whatever you want to call it, and had cheese danishes. <laughs> so, so good, so good, and Java. So. Yes. Uh, while we were there, we met uh, a person that we saved uh, from uh, a couple of ho- hooligans the night before, and it turned out to be someone very relevant uh, to the lore of Murder Hobo. So, and it's not Steve. Uh, <laughs> uh, turns out, yeah, it turns out it is a, it is a relative of um, one of our characters from the previous uh, main campaign so uh i'll let carrie expound upon that <laughs> uh, carrie uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and then go ahead and pick up where david left off please. uh i'm carrie and i'm lucky because my husband wrote cacophony for me and i play camille and who did we meet <laughs> uh you met lucas's parents and his parents and his, right. and his and his aunt, right? Uh, yes. His aunt. Yeah. yeah. And he was quite the handful. Oh yeah. <laughs> he had to be restrained for a large child. <laughs> so uh did we get Lucas to the... Gump. <laughs> yeah, Lucas Gump. Uh we had a lunch date, I believe. Yes, we, we had, had a lunch, lunch date. date. We had our lunch date. We met with um uh Frank, what was the gentleman's name again? I, I only write this shit. I, I only write this shit. Uh, it was the uh, one of the Abbots who uh, is a Sherlock Holmes fan. Yeah, he's oh, the yeah. one that's our connection. Yeah. So Sherlock uh, gnomes. <laughs> oh, gnomes. Okay. So prior to our lunch date, uh, we noticed that aircraft were approaching the city. It's just uh, all various kinds of balloon and dirigible aircraft started making their way towards the the Coliseum-like facility that was known as Dirigible Farms. So we made our way there, and it turned out that there was uh, an incident there uh also a guest showed up but we'll we'll tell you about that later um so uh while we were exploring dirigible farms turns out that uh there was an incident there they were testing uh new balloons there and they had one that was made out of uh green dragon hide and it wasn't cleaned very well and of course there There was was an explosion Yes. Oh, yes. the no manity. Oh, the no manity. Yeah. He was dying to spring that oh on us. Oh, my God. That was so, awesome. So, yeah, thanks to some lucky rolls and Zadar grabbing Camille, we were able to get out of there relatively unharmed. Uh, we were also rescued by the hunky uh, proprietor of Dirigible Farms, you know, this buff gnome. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Zeppelin. Uh, the last name is Smith. Zeppelin. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. With with the propeller beanie. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he thanked us profusely for that. Uh, we had an exchange with him. We told him that we had seen aircraft uh, similar before, and it turns out he was a relative of Aerosmith from a previous episode. So. Uh, and from there, uh, after we recovered from that incident, uh, we hurried to our lunch date uh, with the, the abbot from the library. So, so yeah. And then Camille and, killed somebody. Yeah. I didn't kill anybody. We end up from lunch to Kennedy assassination is basically, yeah. and I'm saying literally Kennedy assassination because... The person in question, their name was Kennedy. So, yeah, thanks, Frank. Because my husband's an <laughs> asshole. Prince Kennedy of the Aarakocra. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to talk to them because I had never seen Blue Jay Aarakocra before. Yep. I just wanted to get to know from the them. the left, down. From the left, down. <laughs> and the other tragedy before this, of course, Kennedy was spirited away and we didn't know... Uh, yeah, what fate was in store for him? But yeah, we were com- 
uh, quickly descended upon <laughs> the, the local constabulary as well as the Secret Service agents for <laughs> for Kennedy. So, and of course, we got arrested and accused of two being, days in the hooskow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, involved in the assassination uh, attempt on Prince Kennedy. So, yeah. Yeah, Zadar and Camille. Yeah, and we have a penchant for jails, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and now Camille, uh, this this last part. What uh, what happened at the end of the episode? So we found out that Mortimer had shown up in town, and I was mad because when you have time travel. You can't ever tell when anybody is showing up from anywhere. So I thought he was time traveling from a time beforehand when he would still have the amulet because it could have been who the fuck knows when and it made me mad. So that's why I was mad. For 12 hours, boys and girls, would not tell me why she was pissed off. She was under the impression there was time travel going on. There is not. However, Mortimer J. Sneed is in uh, the town, yep. and that is, I'm sure, not going to cause any problems whatsoever. Whatsoever. I'm sure, that's probably going to be easy. And who let him go? He's sick. I don't know. He's persuasive, so I don't know. He did something. Must have been a female. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that is cacophony. Uh, that is a week from Thursday. This Thursday, of course, is the crud campaign for you Cthulhu fans. Uh, Saturday, we were going to have a one shot, but circumstances dictated otherwise, so it got canceled. Uh, I had already prepped the previous Sunday for episode 303, uh, but that got canceled. But it did run this past Sunday, and that is the Margu campaign. Uh, and that is our tri-generational campaign. We've got the grandfather, his two sons, his nephew, and uh, his uh, two grandchildren. Uh, these guys were in the middle of a cave. Uh, they were disgruntled for the most part. Caravan guards who got the axe when a new company took over. They had a few adventures prior to getting underneath the mountain, trying to find this snake cult, which they never did. They did find piercers that damn near killed them. They found a wyvern that didn't even come remotely close to killing them. Uh, this past Sunday, they found the goblin horde uh, that resides in the mouth of the mountain. Uh, the goblins did cause them a wee bit of trouble. They executed a merchant, one on accident. Then they accidentally executed two guards because the barbarian was in a rage. Uh, they did, however, find the exit and managed to get to the town of Yintz, which they have been to before. And we had a few urban problemos, uh, including another angst love interest, a uh, personality disorder barbarian, uh, and a real estate broker uh, the Mad Cleric. Uh, so uh, I, we aren't sure if we'll play it this Sunday or not. If we are, I highly recommend it. If you're interested, we do have an archive, both uh, audio video and audio only. So check those out. Uh, those were our two games last week. Uh, as David has pointed out, Calamity B-Side will be going on this Saturday. Cred is going on Thursday. So still a couple more games. Uh, and as always, if you're interested in being on the talk show or on one shot, hit us up, mhobo Inc., Twitter, or Gmail. Uh, moving on to our favorite segment, uh, the Iron DM. Uh, we have done several flavors of this, including these guys not knowing what happens until we actually go live. That is not the case this evening. Thank uh, God he took pity on me. Today, we went ahead and uh, passed out, uh, roll the dice, uh, mm -hmm. passed out maps. So each one of us have taken a community map, and we've had to answer several questions about it. Uh, and that is what we're going to discuss tonight. So we will begin with David, uh, because he has experience in this. 
and then we'll go to Carrie, and then we'll go to me. So David, let me go ahead and pop up your map that you had. You were number three, correct? Mm -hmm. Damn it, that's the one I wanted. Okay, folks, <laughs> so this map is what David got today. As you can tell, there's no numbers, no letters, no nothing, not even a name other than offering three. So David, uh, we'll start with, uh, what'd you call this place? Well, uh, I actually based this on characters that I play in a campaign. And uh, yeah, so my character is a bard and he's worked his way up to master bard. And uh, yeah, so what else but to do, but to, you know, you reach the pinnacle of your craft is to found your own city. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I kept it musical. We have cacophony. So this is the city of Crescendo. Ah, so nice. Where everybody talks very loudly. You know, it's in a pitch that <laughs> raises up. You become loud guy after a while. I'm nice. kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, yeah, that's the name of the community is Crescendo. Why'd you name it that? Why did I name it that way? Uh, because again, city's founder is a master bard and that actually happened to be the operative word for, for a magical object that he had. So. Nice, I like that. Uh, what kind of environment are we talking here? Okay, what we're talking about is basically there's, I went with foothills and then there's a vale, a valley, a valley. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the foothills only surround it on three sides. The other side is uh, towards the bay that leads to the ocean. Mm -hmm. So that I, that I would have that because we have the, the dock and the port system set up. Okay. So uh, uh, that's the basic kind of like geography of, of the place so far. So what's the weather like there? Uh, the weather is, uh, what would be the term? uh temperate you sure. know you know uh so like Jersey. usually uh well then temperate's not that i'm th i'm thinking more like um northern california like uh san francisco bay area that's yeah, still Stuff temperate like. yeah that'll work yeah. very yeah. nice uh carrie let's go ahead and stop the share on this one you had the, 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 the number two correct yes Okay, uh, here is the map she got. Uh, no bay, but I do see a river. Carrie, what do you call your place? My place is called Lyriton. Oh. Okay. And why is it called Lyriton? Well, because this is a very well-off city. Well, not in a um, hoity-toity sense sense but just the fact that its citizens are well taken care of um so lira for money and um so yeah that's why i named it that and it sounds pretty is uh, the lira the coin of the realm uh sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then shit on the fly boys and girls that's how you do it uh where are you located what's the weather like so the um the so we've got the river and then up above our hills and those hills are all terraced for grapevines nice so that's all vineyard up there so the weather is um it's kind of like in a sense it's kind of like indiana you got hot summers um, it can get very dry, but the winters are milder, um, so it's perfect grape growing weather because it's a shitty roads. Uh, no. <laughs> well, actually, you don't see a lot of roads <laughs> at, at right now, so yeah, that is true. Um, so yeah, they're probably all dirt at this point. Um, but it's a very good region for growing grapes and doing the wine thing. Nice. I like that. Uh, last but certainly not least, I had number four, boys and girls. Wah, so wah. that's right. I, I got the 
leftovers, but I didn't get number one, so that's not bad. I call this place uh, Port Centralia. Uh, it is the central port of its nation, a hub for shipping, uh, and it is in uh, kind of a quasi subtropical land. Uh, think either San Diego or off the coast of Espana. Uh, clearly the warm waters are conducive for mariners. Uh, this place, much like the others, uh, this walled area is on a hill. Uh, everything else slopes down or behind. Uh, there are some hills over to this side, just like the others. Yes, if you uh, use this particular program online, we all know that is crops or grassland tough shit tonight. It is hills. Uh, so uh, I will <laughs> explain more about the walled section of the city. Uh, but again, nice semi-tropical uh, warm coastal waters uh, makes it great for sailors uh, and a nice big cove. Uh, moving on from that, let's go to our second section. Uh, folks at home, this is what we used, uh, and I will go ahead and post that on Twitter later. So if you want to have fun with that, uh, these questions are the basic ones that you'd want to ask. Uh, you can certainly use uh, a book of random tables, and I highly recommend Dr. Tim Woods, uh, Random Tables, Cities and Towns. Uh, 16 bucks, I believe I got it at Joanne Fabric. Uh, Super and it weird. Has, yeah, it has just a shitload of tables in it. Highly recommend this book. Very happy with it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go off this list, uh, and then we'll just go ahead and flesh everything out. So back to David with the best map. Oh, oh God. God. I'm so mad he got three. I really wanted three. <laughs> so pissed. I should have cheated. Back to map three. Uh, David, who lives here? Well, uh, it is a very diverse uh, population. Uh, since it is a port city, uh, uh, the demographics are you know various races uh, that 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 come in uh, you know from the coast. Uh, they can travel up the coast uh, towards this town. That's the road that kind of leads in. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to say uh, a large population of the demographics is human. Um, you know, the other or just various other races there. The percentages just just vary. Um, there's uh, it, it's not intentional, but uh, like races tend to populate certain areas of the city itself. Uh, it isn't like a, like so much uh, a class system there, but there there is there are houses of nobility. Uh, there's districts. Uh, there's like um, depending on uh, crafting and things like that. There's guilds. So depending on the guild or whatever and the the merchants, and we can get all that when we get into the merchant thing. But basically, it's a pretty diverse population, is basically what I'm, I'm saying. Very nice. Are they happy? Uh, they tend to be because, the, you know, this is, hey, this is a city founded by a, a bard and a, and, a and a magician. So, yeah. So, uh, tends to be a lot of festivities, but we'll get, we'll get into that. <laughs> is it Weird Al? Is Weird Al the bard? You know what? I really wish it was. <laughs> nice. uh, okay, that's fair. That's fair. We'll uh, move back on to uh, Carrie's. Uh, once I get the screen share working, Carrie, same question, different answers. Uh, who lives here? So the region was initially purchased by a, a family who who came from a lot of poverty they were able to gain enough money to purchase some land in this area that wasn't so 
uh, prized at that time uh, and they've built it up from here and so the population here is kind of like the island of misfit toys so you have people that come here that don't really fit in anywhere else have been taken in by this family because they need workers for the vineyards or you know to help uh, with the winemaking process etc so you have that start of it and since they were on the river which is a good way to, to trade eventually you have other merchants that came into the area and found their mm, their wares were complementary uh, with what was here they enjoyed the the hmm, ambiance of the the area and they felt like they fit there so it's just kind of grown up from there so is it like blazing saddles and they're all named johnson no no they're not all <laughs> named johnson i mean as far as race is concerned or anything like that it, there's no like defining population it's just People find their way there and they they feel at home and they stay. It's kind of it's like, like a cracker barrel. It's like a hippie commune. Ah, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Frisco, boys and girls. Uh, I went ahead and I I pretty much did the same thing with number four. Uh, however, I gave my people the name of Crags uh, because originally in neolithic times whatever they all came from the caves uh that are on the border of the city uh they are a swarthy people a seagoing people uh think greek think uh spaniards uh something along those lines uh these people are very rough and sturdy uh they are no nonsense and they are to the point they are hard workers uh, and as such, uh, there's very little crime there, uh, which helps out a great deal. There is a problem. Uh, however, we will go ahead and get to that next. Uh, moving back to David. Uh, you know what? I wonder if I could do this. Uh, right. David, let's go with what's your political structure? Okay. Uh... I don't know. I think I came up with, with this term. I probably not because this game is so old. <laughs> so uh, basically uh, it is a democratic and I guess the word would be magic, magic, magiocracy, I guess. See, Car Carrie did not know that one earlier tonight. What's that? Uh, the major crowd. Magiocracy. Magiocracy. Yeah, ma yeah. Magiocracy. There we go. So so yeah, there, there's like three branches of government, like in our democracy, supposed democracy. Uh, one, the there, there is something that is kind of like a, a magic, uh, divine and judiciary branch. In uh, the rest, uh, the other two branches are made up of nobles and uh, uh, merchant, as well as uh, guild representatives and uh and the like so they are elected so the officials are are elected so and of course uh with the the mages and the clerics yeah it's a lifetime appointment <laughs> so of course it is because those bastards they know how to rape the system uh they so, am yeah. do you have a major leader there uh a major leader uh yeah, actually, one, actually, actually, I think yeah, we get to that a little bit later. Sure, sure. My bad, my bad. Uh, Carrie, you're up next, offering two. Uh, what's your political structure? So I'm not really sure what to call it. I guess it's kind of a democracy. There is not really a central leader there. So the original family that founded this is called the Mandavi family. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I, you, wow. You no longer get to bitch about any of my names. That's what choices. I was saying. I'm like, oh, this is so frank. Um, wow. So. Were you having a glass of Chardonnay when you thought of it? I didn't. I had Pinot Grigio earlier today. Oh, um, okay. Which but, is white. 
<laughs> we had a really interesting waitress at Olive Garden tonight. Um, but anyway, so the the most um, politically active member of that family, you know, whatever that is, family is at that time, is basically a facilitator. Um, and so there are, uh, how many did I say? So from each, like, social class, there are three elected, um, I don't know, officials. Um, because we want to have an odd number from each group because we don't want people colluding. So when there are things that need to be decided upon, those groups all come together and vote. The facilitator is only there to help facilitate the meetings, and but he doesn't make the decisions. It's made as a group entirely. So I don't know what you call that. Uh, well, it sounds like a triad to me if there are three people in charge. Well, no, there's not three people in charge. It's just from each class, three people are elected to represent that class. It's a democratic republic, just like America. Right. America. Uh, so, trivial pursuit question. We are a republic, not a democracy. Okay, that's, that's true. That's fair. I like that one. That one will work. Uh, moving back over to Port Centralia. Number four, uh, this is governed by Council of Five. Uh, I did not go, uh, I, I kind of like the Council of Five. Uh, those of you who watch Cacophony know five. Uh, I, I like this because uh, it, each ruling member on the council comes from a different way of life. Uh, clearly, there are no lifetime politicians. Uh, you have guild masters, artisans, uh, the fighting class, the clearly uh, the C class. And of course, uh, we will get to it in a few minutes. The leader of the council happens to be a master carpenter. So uh, the one that didn't bob up and down. Oh, too oh. soon. Uh, but that is the one I have chosen. Council of Fox. Council of Five. See, they can't see you hit me in the head <laughs> when I'm sharing the screen. Uh, you know what? We're going to do two at a time uh, because I am really getting tired of flipping through these <laughs> friggin' <laughs> screens. It's really dragging my ass. Uh, so, David, first yes. off, uh, what's your religion base here? Or do you have any? Uh, there's a pantheon. So, uh, since it's such a diverse city, uh, yeah, there are temples uh set up to uh a number of gods but since uh there is there is a college here in a conservatory and since it's the the city itself is uh centered around magic and music uh the major deities that that tend to be representative are uh the goddess mistra as well as malil Agma, Saloon, Savras, and Agma? You chose uh, Agma? Wow. Yeah, knowledge. So why? Uh, that was Blake's deity. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for contrary. Cho yeah. cho chosen of Agma. Yep, yep. Well, Crap, yeah, they're the there. <laughs> so uh yeah, and Lathander. So so yeah. we, we stayed in the Forgotten Realms uh nice. pantheon for that that works uh any of them uh more accepted than the others uh probably lathander and malil in online uh there is uh uh an elvish uh influence there so corellian will come up to him corellian sorry i love the ships they built in star wars uh what's your what's your economic staple the economic staple uh comes from uh various things uh uh timber uh, uh silk also harvested from the fields uh, there are the this um this species of silkworm that that they have it's larger than than normal we're talking wow uh, and um very valuable and uh, they're used uh, 
you know, and harvested for silk. Uh, since it is a temperate area, you know, cooling ocean breeze, uh, as well as uh, the surrounding hills and things like that, it's kind of like wine country. So uh, wine is uh, in wine production is is you know uh, fuels the economy. But also because it's so magic oriented and again in a city uh, founded by bards, one of the things that particular business, a uh, couple of uh, select businesses there are known for wondrous instruments. So creating wondrous instruments. So. Yes. Okay. That will work. We will switch maps again to Carrie. Uh, Carrie, same questions. What's your political structure on this place? Didn't we do that already? No. I thought we did. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. We, I'm sorry. Yes, we did do that. Uh, <laughs> what was your answer on that? I didn't write it down. Oh my God, I had this. Oh, no, no, I, I'm sorry. I typed it down. Oh. My bad. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've got the actual one and then I have the printed out one i'm sorry religion what do you got for religion so church the, of satan please tell me church of satan please tell me church <laughs> of satan. hail satan hail, hail satan um, hey, Tom. <laughs> so it would be more pagan based so they're what? an earth religion so it would be i don't know i guess you would say the god and goddess because you have to have the male masculine and feminine sides of it so they follow like the seasons the harvest blah 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 but of course since they their economy is mainly based in wine or that was the first one of course they have to follow we'll just throw it back to the greeks or whatever bacchus so they have to have you know that guy running around so that's how their religion works so when you say pagan or agricultural are you going more druid or less druid well probably or less just in the middle well less druid i mean they view the earth as the the earth is everything the nature is everything so that's like the center of their religion so it's based on you know this you know the spring the earth comes alive again and in the summer you know there's harvesting and etc cetera, etc cetera. okay that'll work what's your uh, economic staple so of course wine started out as the original economic staple the family came and they started their vineyards and then of course the offshoots of that are you've got to have the barrels to store the wine in and um you've got to ship it out you've got to have people to come in and macerate the grapes and do you know the aging and all this kind of stuff so as that started then all these other industries connected to that came with it and then as they started to export people started coming and saying oh this wine is wonderful and they would come here and they would so people started to gravitate towards so since it's a river community it's a great place for people to come and trade and go back and forth so you've got inns and restaurants and you know places for people to stay that are coming to trade so it's very varied as far as what they have okay but it's all based around the wine primarily based around the wine the you've got you know other businesses that are directly related to that but then you've got businesses that feed off of that so you've got like you need to have people to take care of the workers you know that work in the vineyards and then you've got to have people that supply the things that they need at the vineyards but then you've also got like you have to have like uh, vendors that have food um, you know cloth for people have clothes so it's 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 varied so are we talking like chicago slash kansas city where it's metropolitan but still uh waffles to the um plebeians mm, yeah i would say that okay that's fair enough 
Switching maps again to mine. Uh, even though it doesn't really do anything, at least to get you in the mood for this. Uh, port Centralia, no shit. It is a port city. Uh, port cities worship sea gods, and there is one and only one religion in Port Centralia, and that is worshiping the goddess Wave. <clears throat> Clearly, she is the goddess of water. Uh, she controls the good and the bad, and sometimes the ugly. Uh, this area right here is her temple. It is the second largest building in Port Centralia, uh, next to, of course, the government building, because, you know, government has to use their money somewhere. Uh, beyond uh, the backside here is a beautiful water park with slides and cool things. Nice. All it's things Waterloo. Nautical. It's Waterloo. Uh, you can meet Bill and Ted there. Uh, so Wave got everybody, well, not quite everybody, and we'll get to that later, uh, worships Wave. Uh, she is a benevolent sea goddess. Uh, pale blue skin, possibly elven in nature. Uh, she has never appeared to them, although there is a statue out in the bay as well as smaller statues uh, in the city, especially uh, water features. So she spits out water to people. Uh, the other thing is the economic staple. Clearly, when you have ships, you have import export business. Uh, the people of Port Centralia make the best ships uh, available to the region. And they are highly sought after for both merchant and marine vessels. Uh, they do make warships, as you can tell over on the dock area, three main docks, four main docks. The three main docks are the military. Uh, so this entire region down here is devoted to shipping, uh, whether it be Carpenters, uh, sailors, chain makers, uh, etc. Shipping is the lifeblood of Port Centralia, uh, and there is no other. Now, all of the, uh, I guess, support roles, the previous lumberjack, lumber mill, things of that nature, support it, but shipping is clearly numero uno uh david let's go back with you and let's go ahead and talk about the next item up for bid what's your merchant structure look like uh you're gonna have to clarify that because i didn't quite know how to answer that uh is it uh based on independent retailers is it more of guild is it more of collegiate is it more of, uh, I don't know, uh, jackass summer festivals where everybody makes the same thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right. For instance, I, I chose guilds. No, no, there's there's guilds and uh, art, you know, artisan guilds uh, as well as independent retailers and things like that. So, no WalMarts. No WalMarts. Nope. Nope. Okay. Support local businesses, folks. There you go. And that's that's good advice, folks. Uh, no supply and, chain and, uh, <laughs> problems. That's right. Well, no, because, by God, Port Centralia builds fucking ships that can unload fast. Now, who's the leader uh, or perceived leader? I, I will take either or on this one. Uh, we, we've all chosen our political structure. Mm -hmm. Is a member of that political structure the leader, or is there a power behind the throne for your city? Tell us about Crescendo. Uh, uh, there are three leaders elected officials. One from the uh, from the uh, you know like the magical branch of government, uh, as well as the others, and they're they're all elected officials now. The, as far as the one that is concerned with uh, the one, the the magical branch of government and all that, they're elected from among themselves. So, mm -hmm. now who are the other two leaders from? 
Uh, they're from from the common man and the merchants and the the guild and, and stuff like that. There's also nobility. There's a noble branch, so they're they get an elected official too. <laughs> so, so I guess you would guess call it like a triad. I guess. Okay, that works. Uh, moving back to number three. You know what? Let, let's go one more for you because uh, that spaces out better. That's claim okay. to fame. Claim to fame and crescendo. Uh, claim to fame and crescendo is uh, if, I'm well, in, I'm, if I if I'm in cacophony, what do I know about crescendo? Uh, crescendo. Their claim to fame is. Uh, music and music festivals so as well as their award-winning wine music and music festivals nice well the von trops or von von tropes let's go von tropes von tropes yeah no yeah. it's a two-week music festival man <laughs> nice burning burning humanoid yeah exactly yeah we'll go with that one i'm sure that works Offering number two, Lyriton. Carrie, tell me about the merchant structure. Okay, so the winemaking clearly dominates all of it. Um, but there's no, we don't have guilds or anything like that. It's all just kind of organically grown from the winemaking industry. Um, What's the rest of the question? Uh, is is that pretty much it on the merchant structure? There's no overseer, no master uh, sommelier, none of that crap. No, because the the whole winemaking thing. That's I mean, it's kind of like I guess it's like a it's like a lord that owns everything. And then, not that it, that's how it works, but then everybody below it is not really beneath it, but they all kind of contribute. So there's- Is it a fiefdom in the wine industry? It's not, it's not a fiefdom. It's just that the winemaking family kind of oversees everything to make sure that everything is fair and equitable. Hmm. So it's uh, capitalism. Everybody's allowed to go about and do their best and reap the rewards of their best. Yes. So you're telling me we can have Coors next to uh, Paps Blue Ribbon or uh, Robert Mondavi's best next to Mad Dog 4040? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And each one would appeal to the broader audience. Yeah. Okay, who, who's the leader of the family? Who's the leader that we all love? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said before, there. I mean, the family itself would be the elder statesman. I guess that would be Robert Mondavi. Nice. But, Never again do you get to hack on me. I know. Um, <laughs> but again that the the family only fills the facilitator role there's multiple people elected from amongst its groups to represent the overall society so when there are issues that happen in the community they have to come together and vote on it now does uh mr mondavi get uh, veto power no really nope He's a facilitator only. He makes sure that everything stays on track. They don't get distracted. We're that's it. That's all he does. Uh, I think we all know what the answer is, but if I'm in cacophony and I hear about Lyrithin, what are they famous for? Their high quality of living and the happiness of its people. Quality of life. That sounds like every medieval fantasy I've ever been part of. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, very good. That works. Moving on to shitty number four. Say moi. Uh, what are we doing here? 
the merchant structure, as I alluded to earlier, it is based on guilds, okay? Nothing runs without the power of the guild. Ergo, the guilds are pretty much in charge. Uh, the leader, the power behind the throne, the power behind the Council of Five is actually one of the members of the Council of Five. Uh, he is the master carpenter, and his name is Balsa Noggin. Uh, he is an elder statesman, although he is still a carpenter. Again, no professional politicians in Port Centralia. Uh, this guy knows his wood, and he knows how to wield it. Uh, the, claim, uh, the claim to fame, no surprise whatsoever. They make the best ships, period. Uh, if you were looking for a uh, merchant vessel or a marine vessel, you come to Port Centralia, you pay the money, and you're going to pay a hefty price because they are the best ships. Uh, they're the gray joys. <laughs> that's right. They're the, they the gray joys. Uh, with that, we move back to David. Mm -hmm. uh and we're starting to run shy on time so i'm gonna have to pick up pace okay. uh customs and rituals uh customs and rituals uh one of the the <laughs> I, I guess you would say kind of quasi ritual that they have uh there's always a midweek and a end of 10 day celebration uh it's usually like a concert after dark or something like that that they'll have uh midweek and at the tent day it's like a sunday afternoon concert you're saying like tent that. tent right not 10 yeah 10 10 uh, day you know like in D, D, 10 day there's 10 days in, in their week like seven eight nine and ten ten day mm -hmm. okay so so during the midweek that's mm -hmm. the music but then on the 10th day or Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm not understanding that. Okay. It, it's basically, we'll, we'll just keep it at this. There's a midweek and end of week celebration. Okay. End of week. Gotcha. So the 10th yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. God, how do you guys get anything done? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh, who are your troublemakers? Uh, troublemakers are probably the usual suspects, cult leaders from, from things like from uh, opposing pantheons, you know, like Bane or something like that, or anybody that the, that the, <laughs> uh, that the uh, magiocracy deems a party pooper because we're known for partying. So <laughs> they're shamed and followed around town by jesters and clowns <laughs> until they smile. Do they ring bells? Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, most famous. A lot of person. pie throwing. Ah, nice. Uh, who's your most famous person? Oh, of course, the city's founder. That would be Alistair, Lord Alistair Ash. He is the bardliest of bards. Ash A S H or uh, A S H E. -S -E. Got it. And yeah. what's your best festival? Uh, best festival is the two weeks music festival. Uh, it is concerts during the day and then they're after hours celebration. Uh, the noble houses actually uh, host parties uh, in the evenings of the, the festivals. Uh, it's one of the noble houses called Kid and Play. Yeah, exactly. Nice haircut. <laughs> uh, moving back over to Carrie. Uh, let's go with the same questions, uh, starting with uh, customs and rituals. So all of all of the merchants that are here um, are required to, I'm going to call it this, it's not a religious thing, but basically tithe. So any profits that they make, they have to put a certain percentage aside into the central bank which is the the structure that's in the walled part okay right here yes so any monies any of that money is required to be put here and 
those monies are used to help uh, any people that are unable to work, um, if they're senior citizens, disabled, if they're children without families, it, it supports those people. What about moochers? Moochers. So typically there aren't moochers here. Okay. Because if they don't come and work, like say I hire this person, they don't show up for their job. Next time there's a ship coming, we put them on it and they go away. Nice. Very nice. Ship them off to Lebanon. Yes. Uh, troublemakers. What you got? You got any troublemakers there? So typically that comes from people that are coming from outside. So <laughs> Immigrants. Gotcha. No, 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 no. Oh. Not that. <laughs> so we have people that come here to trade or people that have come here and heard about the city and how great our lifestyle is and how everybody's so happy. And they come and they want to try to... Um, twist it somehow they like want to find a way to mm, cheat it or steal from it or make a quick buck off of it so the republicans hmm, <laughs> possibly so those are the people that usually are the troublemakers we don't i mean we do have clerics and priests that come sometimes that are horrified because we don't really have a centralized religion and they want to come and try to convert people, but they go on their way click quickly. Are they put into stews? No, they're just um, encouraged to continue on their journey. Okay, fair enough. Most famous person. Well, that would be Robert Mondavi. <laughs> he, he left he his family was born in poverty and he managed to save up enough money to take his family here and buy this land and start his vineyard and his goal has always been to make sure that people have a good standard of living no matter what their social class is as long as they are willing to put in the work and no wine shall be sold before it's time exactly <laughs> Uh, kids at home, if you don't get that, you're just too young. Uh, last but not least, uh, what's your most famous festival? So, of course, every year we have to have a festival at the Vineyard Harvest. Mm -hmm. So once the harvest is done, we have a whole week where no one's allowed to work. Nobody works. So it doesn't there's not necessarily like anything going on it's kind of like a two-week vacation everything closes down and you can do whatever you want that's it very nice uh i'll buy that not sure uh what about the convenience stores and the gas stations are they open well we don't need gasoline oh my god everybody needs gas <laughs> Uh, okay, for uh, my town, Port Centralia, uh, their uh, customs are their early risers. Uh, they wake up early, they get their jobs done, and they go to bed early. Early to bed, early to rise. Yep. Uh, makes, Franklin. Makes them all healthy, wealthy, and wise. Uh, they do have troublemakers in town, and it is the Cabal of Luna. Uh, this particular group is anti-tide because they are pro-slaver uh, support i.e. rowers but the uh, moon does the tide hey I, I built this on the fly so <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can i say how about how about looney cult of loon cabal of looney uh their most famous personage is a female admiral leticia soul she was the heroine of Centralia Bay, which is their most famous festival. It's called Crags Day. It's celebrated on the fourth day in the middle of summer, uh, and it comm commemorates the Battle of Centralia Bay when uh, invaders attempted to take over Port Centralia and failed due to the heroic efforts 
of Admiral Soul. She saved us all. Uh, we're going to skip the historical facts because we're starting to run a little bit long. But folks, uh, we'll go ahead and post the map images. We'll go ahead and post our personal results. Uh, and if you're curious or you think you've done something better, let us know and uh, put your money where your mouth is and prove it to us in one month at the next Iron DM. We'd love to have you on here because we do not know everything. We are not the smartest people on the planet. But you oh, know what? No. We have fun doing it. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord channel. If you want to buy our cool crap, uh, link is down there somewhere. Most importantly, if you want to be on the show, either the talk show or the one shots, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on here. Don't forget if you need dice and let's face it, who doesn't? Uh, at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter is a good spot to go. Uh, there are several others. So, but uh, you know, we like Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, and if your game stinks, unlike ours, we smell like success and coolness. Uh, check out Adventure Sense with 60 different scents available. You will find one that you really enjoy. Uh, they also make the shine system to write gooder than me. And they are working on fulfilling their Kickstarter obligations. Uh, folks, cred is on Thursday. Calamity B on Saturday. We'd love to see you back. Get with us in chat. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, until then, let's uh, blow them a kiss and wave goodbye. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.